Hey everybody, welcome back to the Frugal Filmmaker Q&A, the show where you ask me a question and I panic and scramble looking for an answer. Your best chance of having a question read on this show is to send me an email at thefrugalfilmmaker at gmail.com or you can leave a comment below or you can contact me on Twitter at Frugal Filmmaker. If you missed my video last week, I did a tutorial on Sony Vegas. I haven't done one of those in a while and this time I did one called Track Motion Tricks. So if you're a Sony Vegas user, you might be interested in that. Or you can also check out the big playlist I have of previous Sony Vegas or Sony Vegas Pro, I guess, uh, tutorials from the past. Our first question comes from email today from Bridget R, who says a lot. But we're going to paraphrase. The first thing Bridget writes me about is an anecdote from using the PVC stabilizer rig. And she says, something I thought you'd like to hear as we were filming a topless woman protesting about free speech and desexualizing women's breasts, etc., well, we were using your rig to film it, and no joke, most everyone there noticed the rig before the topless woman. Some people didn't know which direction to keep looking, the naked woman or the weird thing. Great anecdote. She does have a question. She says, I've been struggling trying to get a camcorder mounted on my motorcycle helmet. The problem is I can't figure out a good way to get the camcorder on there. Can you help me with this? A frugal video on this would be awesome. Well, after thinking about this question, and because she also talks about how she doesn't want to have to buy a GoPro because she's already got a good camcorder, very valid argument. I kept thinking uh, maybe you shouldn't be trying to mount your camcorder on your helmet. Maybe mount it on your body. There's a couple of rigs you can actually get, or one in particular I can think, which is kind of a shoulder rig sort of that attaches to your chest and it's real common. It's only about $25. Lots of people have used them, but it stays kind of fixed onto your body, almost like a snorry cam would. But instead of pointing at the subject, it points, you can point the camera outward, it even has kind of a swiveling base so you can move the camera around. So that might be an option. I'm going to check the link below for that. Uh, there also might be a third person rig you can build, uh, which is basically a backpack and then you have like some PVC pipe coming out of the backpack and it looks over your shoulder, that kind of thing. Maybe it'd be like Predator and the shoulder mounted cannon. Um, or maybe you could put the backpack on the front of your body and mount the camera that way pointed forward. It wouldn't be on your helmet, of course, it wouldn't be a POV type of a shot, but it might be a way of doing it without having to get a GoPro and buy a mount for your helmet since that doesn't seem to be a viable option for you. Or maybe someone else out there watching this can give you uh, some suggestions below. So that, that's what I think. All right, our next question comes from last week's Q&A from Writer Girl T, who says, tell me more about the ballets you used to film. I'm very interested in learning how to film a ballet performance. Well, essentially what I've done, actually I just recently did one. It's essentially a multicam shoot with one person. And the one person is me. And what I do is actually shoot several performances and then edit them together in post. The nice thing is there's a continuous music, music track throughout the whole performance, so it makes syncing up easy because once the uh, music starts, like in Act 1 and Act 2, it never stops until the act is over, so I don't have to worry too much about sync issues. Uh, but what I do is I set up a wide shot in the very back of the theater that covers the whole stage, and then for one performance I'm shooting on the left side or a camera one uh, position, typically it's camera one if you're shooting it live, and then camera two is the wide shot, of course. And then on another performance, I shoot another wide shot, same position. And then on the right side of the stage, or a camera where camera three would be. Now, since I'm the only one doing this, of course, um, the wide shot is fixed. Uh, but the two other shots are close-up cams, so I can kind of zoom in and cover the action. I always try to include everybody. If something, if anything is happening happening on stage with a group of people, I always make sure that I'm covering everybody. I'm not really shooting a lot of close-ups because the DVDs that are going to benefit the ballet company, everybody who buys them wants to see their loved ones, so I try and cover everything. And then all I'm doing after that is just editing all those performances together in post. It's, it's pretty simple. The best advice I think I can give for doing something like this is I gave last week in another multicam situation, only we were, we were referring to sports then. When you're running the mobile camera or the close-up camera, you just always pretend that you're live because you never know what shot you're going to need in post. And if you just pretend you're live the whole time and at any time you might need that shot you're on, you just always have to be on your game. So it's not super complicated. I mean, you do have to have an editor that uh, edits multicam, which is any editor with the word pro in it, a uh, Premiere Pro, uh, Sony Vegas Pro, I guess Final Cut Pro. Or is it just Final Cut X now? I'm not sure. But any higher end editor will allow you to shoot multicam, probably some less expensive ones as well. But you have to be able to do that, as well as have the computing power to be able to play HD stream, multiple HD streams, at least three, since you're dealing with three cameras, and then you're just cutting in between them. So I'm not going to go into the details of how to edit multicam, but that's the setup I use. Now we have another comment from YouTube. This was from last week's video, Track Motion Tricks, a Sony Vegas video. And Nice Kid 76 asks, Hey, I was just wondering if A, you've heard, heard of and used Vegasaur, and B, if you color correct in Vegas. Well, I have heard of Vegasaur, 
Vegasaur is a plugin that gives you all kinds of options, all kinds of scripting options, and all uh, presets and everything else. It'll allow you to do all kinds of cool effects and tricks. It's about 100 bucks, I believe. I've never really put in the money to get any of those type of a pro those type of programs. They are awesome. I've always used the trials, and then I'm always sad when they run out. But I haven't really invested in them yet. Maybe I should. Or maybe they can send me one to review. Uh, but it is good. And Vegasaur, that site, is also where I got the free plugin that I use all the time, which is uh, you video for YouTube, which is basically a quick and dirty way of rendering your video out. Uh, for uploading to YouTube. So that's something I'd recommend, even if you're not interested in Vegas or if you use Vegas, it's a free script video for YouTube. That you can, or a free plugin that you can easily add and use. I use it in mine all the time. As far as color correction goes, yes, I do color correct in Vegas, although admittedly I'm not a colorist. So my knowledge of uh, color correction and color grading is very limited, but I do the best I can. I try and do everything in Vegas, actually. I don't like to export to other programs because I am a one-man operation. And so I try and do everything self-contained as often as possible. And there's, there are lots of color correction tools in Vegas, like a lot of editors have a basic set of you know, color wheels and you have levels and curves and things like that. So if you know what you're doing, you can get some decent results. I do the best I can. Again, I'm not a colorist, but I do most things and everything if possible in, inside of Vegas. All right, our next question is from Twitter, and this is Brittany Garth, who says, Why is Sony Vegas your editor of choice as opposed to a program like Premiere or After Effects? It's a big Vegas show, I guess. Uh, I picked Sony Vegas because a long, long time ago, I was using a program called Edit DV, or right around the, the uh, digital video revolution. I was using a Sony VX1000, and porting footage over from a Firewire, from tape to the computer to edit, and I, there was a program called Edit DV that a friend of mine had that I was using. That program changed hands and became a program called CineStream. It was an upgrade. And then CineStream would just went dead. It, uh, the company was no longer developing it. So I was looking for another editor, and my choices were uh, Sony, or actually it was, it was Vegas. It was just called Vegas from Sonic Foundry. It was the original parent company. And I think it was on version 4 at the time. It used to be Vegas Video, and then it was just Vegas. And I liked it, and I bought it. And so I've stuck with it ever since. I know other programs have come up, and Premiere actually at the time wasn't as good as Vegas. I believe it's now just as good as, or better as what everyone's telling me. And a lot of more people are using it. I'd probably be wise to at least know how to use it, but I don't. I'm kind of set in my ways. Kind of using Sony Vegas Pro now. It's what I use all the time. Sort of a dark horse. A lot of people don't like it, probably because I've, what I've been told, it doesn't play well with other programs. So if you're doing everything within an editor, Sony Vegas is a good choice. The audio tools are awesome, uh, for example, since it started out as an audio editor. Uh, but if you want to play with other programs, not so much. So that's why, but that's why I use Vegas. I've just been using it for a long time. I know it really, really well, and it does everything that I want, so I feel no need to switch over. And our final question comes from Twitter also, and it's from DJ Ozymandias, who says, saw your stabilization rig video for a camera. What do you suggest using for an iPad? Well, any of the rigs that I make or build or recommend or whatever, always have that quarter 20 tripod mount. And so if you are, if you're using an iPad or you want to use your iPad to shoot video, all you really need to use any of those rigs that I make is some kind of uh, mount like this, which essentially lets you clip your iPad into it and it holds it snugly and it has a quarter 20 thread on the bottom. This one costs about $5 and admittedly, this one isn't doesn't really look super secure. You might have to add some, uh, I don't know, gaff tape on this one to hold your iPad in place. There are other tablet uh, mounts that give you a quarter 20 thread that are probably better than this. But this is one of the few I've seen that actually gives you one on the bottom instead of like holding it from the back or something. And so this should easily fit in any any rig that I've made or that uses quarter 20 mounting. I think this is one of the better designs. I just don't know if it's uh, as stable. Um, so you might have to reinforce it a little bit. But at five bucks, it's not too bad. And if the rigs uh, don't fit the iPad, you can easily expand them because they're either going to be made out of metal flash brackets or PVC, all of which are adjustable and adaptable and cheap. All right, that's all the questions today. Remember, if you would like to ask a question and have it read on this show, please send it to thefrugalfilmmaker at gmail.com. That increases your odds quite a bit. Or you can comment below, or you can send me a message or a question on Twitter at frugalfilmmaker. Remember, I have another video coming up this Thursday or Friday and another Q&A on Monday, so join me then. Thanks for your questions. Really appreciate you watching. See you later. Thank you.